This has the making already to be a phenomenal fight. These are the kinds of fights we're looking for in the sport of boxing. The best must continue to fight the best. That's how we protect the integrity of the sport. Sean Porter is a hell of a fighter. I will always watch Sean Porter fights. He is never in a boring fight. Uh, and he always comes to fight. He's always a supreme athlete. Comes in phenomenal condition. And if you are not ready, if you are not prepared, Sean Porter is going to snatch your confidence from you. Sean Porter has, uh, who has he lost to? He lost to Keith Thurman, Kell Brook, and uh, Errol Spence. But he has a phenomenal resume. He beat Adrian Broner. He beat Danny Swift Garcia. A lot of people think that he beat Keith Thurman. I watched that fight live. The Barclay Center was lit. And I thought he won the fight too based on activity. But it was a close fight. But Sean Porter's a hell of a fighter. Versus uh, undisputed 140-pound champion. Uh, and now moved up to 147 a couple years ago. And WBO welterweight champion Terrence Bud Crawford, I will always watch Terrence Crawford fights because I love Terrence Crawford as a fighter. And both of these guys are great human beings, great dudes, great family men, and they are what boxing needs. And let me tell you something, just when the best fight the best, people will always pay, people will always come, people will always watch. And it might look like boxing's dying, but let me tell you something, the second the best start fighting the best people pour back into the building. I love both of these fighters. Um, Terrence Crawford has a five-inch reach advantage, and Sean, Sean Porter is in your chest. Listen, I don't know that Terrence Crawford is going to be able to stay on the outside versus Sean Porter. I think Porter is going to force this to be a dog fight, and Terrence Crawford is a dog. Terrence Crawford ain't scared of nobody. He's a switch hitter, fights righty and lefty, equally effective from both stances, uh, and has a lot of power, knocks out people with body punches. Sean Porter is a phenomenal body puncher, too. This has the makings to be a phenomenal fight, and just two phenomenal uh, black men, black athletes going at it in the ring. Um, I'm really excited for this fight. Let me take a look at the ESPN article uh, from Mike Coppinger. Shout out to Coppinger. Uh, follow him on Twitter. Terrence Crawford, ESPN's number two pound-for-pound -pound boxer, could be preparing for a quantum leap in competition. That tells you the caliber of opponent Sean Porter is. And what I'm saying is this also, you got to give more credit to Errol Spence because Errol Spence dropped Sean Porter in the 11th round in their fight. And Errol Spence beat him <clears throat> handedly uh, in a really entertaining fight. But uh, Errol Spence beat Sean Porter. And so Sean is not an easy task for anybody. I think Sean Porter might be on his way to becoming a Hall of Famer. If he gets in a few more really big fights, I think he'll be a Hall of Famer. Um, still in his physical prime. And so this is a hell of a fight for, for T-Bud. And I'm excited about this. Um... It just, you know, this article just just tells you the caliber of opponent that that Sean Porter is. So let's keep it pushing. Um, in the letter sent to Crawford's promoter, uh, Bob Arum, uh, the parties were informed that they have 30 days to negotiate the fight. If no deal is reached during that time frame, a purse bid will be ordered in which the rights to the title tilt will be auctioned. Um, just because a fight is ordered by a sanctioned organization, there's no guarantee it'll happen. But this matchup is a natural. There's no chance Crawford is willing to relinquish his belt. It's equally difficult to see Porter passing up another title opportunity. I've been begging for a real challenge for years, Crawford told ESPN. Let me just take a little pause here. Um... I love you as a fighter, Terrence Crawford, as most boxing fans do. Um, you haven't gotten big fights because your promoter is Bob Arum, and Bob Arum has told the boxing community on more than one occasion he cannot afford for you to fight a bigger name. You wanted to fight Pacquiao. Arum said he couldn't afford it. You wanted to fight Porter before. Arum said that he could not afford it. You don't get big fights because your promoter is broke and doesn't have the money to afford a big opponent for you. He has to pay you, but he does not have the money 
to afford a big name for you. Leave your promoter and you will no longer have to beg for big fights. Go over to PBC where all the welterweights are and fight there on your own terms and make a lot more money. I've been begging for a real challenge for years, says Crawford. He told ESPN, all the so-called elite welterweights have shown no interest in fighting me. Now one of them is finally being forced to. No, that's not true. The big welterweights Keith Thurman, Errol Spence, and Sean Porter have all expressed interest in fighting you and would love to fight you. They've always said that they want to fight you. Bob Arum does not have the money to be able to afford them. You should go to someone like Al Heyman, who does have the money to afford them. Just consider that. Just, just, con just consider that. Just consider that they're probably not running from you because they're fighting each other. Yeah, just, 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 just consider. Just, co just consider that they're not, they're not running from you. You are the only top welterweight signed to top rank. Every other welterweight said, I don't want to sign to top rank. That's not a good idea. I understand that top rank was the promoter who discovered you and gave you your shot early on, but you had an opportunity to leave and go where all the top fighters were. You believe the lie that your promoter told you and your own team agrees with what I'm saying. And you stayed with that promoter. And thus staying with that promoter, you chose to not fight the top names. I'll say again. You chose not to fight the top names. By staying with the promoter who couldn't afford top names, you chose not to fight the top names. You could have gone to a promoter who could afford the top names and currently has all the top names, and you have gotten no top names because your promoter can't afford it, and you chose to stay with that promoter, and you should have known your promoter couldn't afford it. Everybody knew somehow except maybe you, but I think you did know, but you just wanted to show loyalty. You chose to stay with top rank. Just wanted to go ahead and, and clarify that in case no one else did. Now one of them is finally being forced to believe whatever you want, T-Bud. We love you as a fighter, but come over to PBC and you'll see no one is running from you. Ah, I'll show why I'm the best pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world. Be ready. We are ready. We're excited for this fight. Allowing the fight to proceed, proceed to a purse bid is risky as top rank learned in February when it lost the rights to the undisputed lightweight title fight between his champion Tiafimo, uh, Tiafimo, Tiafimo and George Cambosis about Triller gobbled up with a bid of more than $6 million. A fight between Crawford and Porter is substantially more marketable. Um, man, I would love to see this, like, put this PBC on Fox, like, with pay-per-view? Come on. I, like, everyone's gonna buy that fight. That's like... If that fight can happen sooner than later, that will be one of the fights that helped save boxing this year. Between AJ versus Usyk, I don't want to see AJ fight Usyk, but it'll be a good fight. Um, Fury Wilder and Crawford Porter, those are going to be the fights that 2021 needs, right? And so this fight going to purse bid, um, I'm excited to see who's going to bid to, to put this fight on. Despite his immense talent, Crawford has never faced a name opponent in his, in his prime. The three-division champion, that being Crawford, fought a faded version of Amir Khan. His knockout victory over um, Julius Ndongo was the first fight of Top Rank's long-term deal with ESPN. That was a good fight. T-Bud knocked him out with um, uh, a, left, a left uppercut to the body. So uh, if I'm correct, I forgot what uh, Ndongo threw, but I know Terrence rolled it and came back with a left uppercut and, and hit him square on, on uh, the front of the ribcage. And um, actually, Ndongo was turning. I think um, I think maybe he threw a right hand and uh, T-Bud slipped it, came back with uh, a left uppercut to, I think it was the liver of, of Ndongo. But man, that joint was, that was a beautiful knockout by, by Crawford. And let's keep it pushing. A hometown attraction in Omaha uh, stoppage went over Jeff Horn. Was the first notable boxing event on ESPN Plus, blah, blah, blah. A fight with Porter, ESPN's uh, number four welterweight, would easily be the switch hitter's most marquee to date. It could also be the final bout of his long-term partnership with Top Rank. Crawford's deal with the promoter has one fight remaining on the contract. Before this auction from the WBO, Crawford was offered a fight with rugged contender David uh, Avenesian um, about that was being eyed for October 23rd in, La in Atlanta. 
they put in a lot of fights in Atlanta. I think um, Top Rank is taking a page out of PBC's book and seeing all, like, if you have black fighters, Atlanta and Brooklyn are great. Like, if you have Hispanic fighters, you know, locations, like, um, depending on where they're from, right? So if they're, like, Mexican, Mexican-American, then fighting in uh, the desert area is a great place. So Texas, um, Nevada, so Ve so Texas... Vegas, um, uh, Phoenix, which is where um, Benavides was going to fight, so Mexican-American, um, and California, right? Carson, California, LA. So those are great places if you have a Mexican-American demographic that you're looking to reach. If you have black fighters, Brooklyn, come back to Barclays, we really miss you, um, and Atlanta, right? Those are great places to put uh, if you want to market black fighters. And so with the WBO surprisingly ordering the bout, attention will now turn to Porter. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Mm -hmm. This is just Porter's history. We already know uh, he's a hell of a fighter. So um, either way, I'm really excited for Crawford versus Porter. I don't yet have... And uh, a, a prediction for this fight yet? I would love to know what you guys think. If you, regardless of who you think is going to win the fight, I want to know who you think is going to win the fight and how you see it playing out. Put that joint in the comments because I want to talk about it. It's going to be a hell of a fight. Like, do you think that Crawford has a chance to win this fight on the inside? If this fight was on the outside, does Sean Porter have the skill to keep up? With Crawford, I don't want us to just act like Sean Porter is just this bulldog that, like Ricky Hatton style, that just comes forward. That's not who Sean Porter is. Sean Porter has very educated feet, very educated. Um, uh, he has a high boxing IQ. I love his footwork. I love his inside work, and um, he he has good head movement. And obviously, T Bud is you know a pound for pound king. He he has power in both hands. Has knocked fighters out with. With both hands, he has a five-inch reach on Porter. So is Crawford really going to try to fight on the inside? Does Crawford have a chance to win on the inside? Does Porter have a chance to win if this fight takes place on the outside? That's what I'm looking to know. How are they going to stand up to each other's power? You get what I'm saying? So um, I'm really, really, really excited for this fight. And like I said, I don't have a prediction yet, but I think... Um, just a phenomenal fight of the year candidate already.